Tomorrow Pictures. The story is in the telling. He was born sometime in April, 1564. The parish register records the baptismal date, the 6th of April, but the birth date is not known. Nor is there any further record concerning William Shakespeare until fully 18 years later. Stratford-upon-Avon, in the late 16th century, was a thriving Warwickshire market town of perhaps 2,000 people. Its fairs and weekly market days were events of some importance to Warwickshire farmers and to Stratford merchants. Among these was John Shakespeare, a bailiff or mayor of Stratford, and a dealer in fine leather. Market day brought excitement and vigor to the town, but it was ever much the same. For the order of things was fixed and unhurried in 16th century England. Shadows of the Middle Ages still fell long across Warwickshire fields and across the minds of Warwickshire men. For the sons of substantial Stratford men, there was the free grammar school but the lessons were mostly Latin and dull. The discipline, severe. Young Master Shakespeare. Tardy once again, I see. As God hath sanctified the rod and correction, to cure the evils of their conditions, to drive out that folly which is bound up in their hearts, to save them from hell, to give them wisdom, so the rod is to be used as God's instrument. But for schoolboys away from their books, there were summer days and the river Avon. There is a willow grows a slant a brook that shows his hoar leaves in the glassy stream. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? You see yonder cloud that's almost in shape of a camel. By the mess, and tis like a camel indeed. And for a Warwickshire lad already more than half in love with words, there was something more. by many as little better than rogues and vagabonds, they were the abstract and brief chronicles of the time. They would act this night in the great guild hall, bringing to Stratford the wonders of the world abroad, of a nation awakening to the glories of its past. Why then, with one voice and like true English hearts, with me 
throw up your caps and for England cry St. George! On the 28th of November, 1582, two Warwickshire farmers posted a bond of 40 pounds at the consistory court in Worcester. Sealed and signed, this bond guaranteed that Will Shakespeare, then 18, should marry no one but Anne Hathaway of Stratford in the Diocese of Worcester, Maiden. It is not known for certain in which church of the diocese the wedding took place. And there is still another mystery. On the day before the Warwickshire farmers pledged their 40 pounds, a marriage license had been issued to young Will Shakespeare and a certain Anne Whateley of Temple Grafton. But of this other Anne, little more is known. Anne Hathaway was 26, eight years older than her husband. In May, following their marriage in November, her daughter, Susanna, was born. There is little more to be known of these long years. Early in 1585, however, the first child was followed by twins. Hamlet and Judith, son and daughter to William Shakespeare, were baptized in Holy Trinity. the young man himself. Was he apprentice to his father's trade? Was he writing at this time? We do not know. These are the hidden years. London, in the year 1592, was at the very center of a new spirit abroad in the land, the spirit of the Renaissance. A splendid city of mansion and hovel cramped within medieval walls. A terrifying city of the plague. Get you hence, for I must go where it fits not you to know. Whither, oh, whither, 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 oh, whither, whither. Thou hast sworn my love to be, thou oh, hast sworn it more to me, then be thy girl stay with us, then be thy girl stay with us. A city of music and of laughter. <laughs> In a new theatre built in Shoreditch, in the courtyard of Inns, a young actor, Richard Burbage, and his company of players have the citizens of London doubled with laughter. But it is not broad comedy alone which enchants both prince and commoner. It is poetry. He jests at scars that never felt a wound. But soft, what light through yonder wakes. It is the east. And Juliet is the sun. Arise. Workman on holiday, merchant and prentice, elegant gentleman and his lady. How London doth pour out her citizens. For Will Shakespeare has the city by its ears. Shakespeare, Richard Burbage, servants to the Lord Chamberlain, for two several comedies or interludes showed by them before Her Majesty the Queen. This royal throne of kings, this sceptred isle, this earth of majesty, this seat of Mars, this other Eden, demi paradise, this fortress built by nature for herself against infection and the hand of war. This 
happy breed of men, this little world, this precious stone set in a silver sea, which serves it in the office of a wall or as a moat defensive to a house against the envy of less happier lands. This blessed plot, this earth, this realm, this England, is now leased out. I die pronouncing it, like to a tenement or pelting farm. But England that was wont to conquer others has made a shameful conquest of itself. The king is come. Deal mildly with his youth. For young hot coats being raged do rage the more. What comfort, man? How is with age? The early years are lost to us. But we know that by the winter of 1596, William Shakespeare had become the wonder of the Elizabethan stage. Oh, 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 oh,